Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is February 16th, 2022. It's time for the Knowledge Bullied Meteorite Hangout, sponsored by Toper Spin Meteorites, Carbonaceous Meteorites Part 2. So we're, today we're discussing the CV and CK clan, the CL and the C ungrouped. We're going to break a little bit of a, of a mile marker today on our YouTube channel, guys. As of midnight tonight, we should cross over 500,000 views, half a million views. So. Wow. It's a meteorite called Yong Chin, and it was a really awesome bullite event. It fell on February 15th, 1997, at 11.23 local time over North China. There was a loud sonic boom, and thousands of small stones rained over Yong Cheng near the Yellow River. Does anyone know any facts about Chelly Banks? There were many sonic booms associated with Chelly. Mm -hmm. And Definitely. it was the meteorite that caused the most human injuries. The dash cam cameras that the Russians had, there were like a dozen videos of it coming from all different angles and scientists were able to, tri to triangulate exactly where it came from in the asteroid belt. And, and one of those dash cam videos that I love is a guy driving to work. This big bright thing happens in front of him. He puts down the visor and just keeps on driving to work. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, from Croatia. So we're going to now turn and view a video from Damian. He's opening a gift from Oz Backman. A big hello from Croatia to all you meteorite fanciers out there. I think I've correctly identified this fragment to be a tiny Abba Panu, as Oz told me one was in package. I don't think there is mistake in this one for something else. No. Nope. It's of course the recent Albright find Dujatu. Wow. Here are wow. a few more photographs in cross-polarized light. Something wow. this shiny can only be a Ukraine. That's quite It's the wonderful Gurara with the main wow. mass split between Oz, Topher and Jason. This is NWA13667. It is a 36 gram um, CV3. But this is my first main mass. There you go. Uh, so that hey. makes it cool. Um, and it's the only main mass that I have that isn't one of my classifications. And uh, ooh, I have ooh. some goodies to show. This is a CK3. And uh, yes, that is a one centimeter scale cube beside a giant CAI. And this one is special in that it has a variety of really interesting CAIs. Uh, this guy down here looks like a fairly normal fluffy cloud sort of CAI, but mm -hmm. that sucker fluoresces purple. Ooh. And not just not just a little bit, it just glows purple. This one has a really total known weight that's low, uh, 169 grams. And there's one other meteorite that's classified as C2. And that's impossible to get because it's from Antarctica. And I think it was like really super low weight. This is C2, one of only two classified in the world. I think this is a pretty historic little display for the CK uh, Karunda type. Oh, boy. Yeah, so this is my a little over half gram sample, but it comes with provenance, as you can see right here, wow. from 1938 from the University of Melbourne. Um, uh -huh. This meteorite fell in 1930. So within eight years, wow. my sample was in a university and then later... 146 grams of it right here went to the uh, Museum of Victoria, and that's where my sample came from. Uh, Mike Kelly takes us week by week through the classification chart in Meteorite 101. So today we're going to have his installment of Meteorite 101, Carbonaceous Part 2. I broke this down, and this is kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know if you realize that uh, I pulled the CI and I moved it on over there and turned it into the CL, because CLs are a pretty new group. And the majority of charts you find out there on the internet don't even have them on there yet. Clan level, we're talking about the CVCK clan, and we're also talking about the CLs, which kind of stand by themselves. And then we'll also be talking about the ungroups and a bunch of proposed groups or proposed grouplets 
Uh, and the major difference is that the CVs will, a lot of the chondrules will have an igneous rim around them. Uh, and there'll be a lot of CAIs uh, in the CVs. And there'll also be a decent amount of matrix, around 40%. Um, you take those CVs and there's actually three different types of CVs uh, in the subtypes. So uh, they are CV reduced. And then there's two types of oxidized CV oxy A and CV oxy B. They, uh, they sent the gentlemen of the house out with lanterns at night and uh, about three meters away from the house, uh, they saw a fresh hole in the snow. They poked at it with a shovel and sure enough at the bottom of that hole was uh, 11 and a half kilograms of Vigorano meteorite. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> yep. And you can see they all plot in that same area together, which means that they, they share that kind of same uh, formation part of the solar system. Uh, where they all generated from. So they're kind of next door neighbors. So this week I have some carbonaceous meteorites to show to you. I will mainly focus on ungrouped uh, carbonaceous chondrites. Or this is probably my favorite subtype of uh, carbonaceous chondrites. The first one for today is Tarda. What is interesting with this one is that it is mainly consisting of thousands of small oriented individuals. What is the dream for microscope observation? <laughs> Next comes this little fragment here. When I looked at it under my microscope, I was amazed to discover that it is a crested microfragment. And I really love wow. this bubbly crest. Look at that. Maxime talked a little bit about why uh, Chuichia 002 is such a special meteorite. Uh, it's, it's some of the most pristine material that's arrived here on Earth. You know, no aqueous alteration at all. It wasn't heated um, at at any point that is discernible through uh, testing that's been done on it. Allende contains carbon, that's why they're called carbonaceous chondrites, and in the form of graphite, diamond, and fullerene. And recently, the uh, amino acid glycine has been discovered, and uh, there's actually uh, a protein that's formed entirely of glycine. We have a viewer question. Pat, the, the question is, what is oxygen isotope testing? What can we learn from it? What can't we learn from it? Why is it done? Just what do you know about it, buddy? If an atom has eight protons, it is oxygen, period. End of discussion. It'll also have eight electrons, but it can have a different number of neutrons. It's still oxygen, but it has a different number of neutrons. So when we talk about oxygen 16, oxygen 17, oxygen 18, we're talking about total molecular weight, uh, which is basically the number of neutrons plus protons. The key part of this, the takeaway is oxygen 16 comes from our sun. Oxygen 17 comes from low and intermediate mass stars, different stars away from our sun. And oxygen 18 comes from high mass stars. But down here, that's where the CAIs are formed. So we know that the CAIs were formed in a special area, we believe very close to our side. The cool thing about this is by measuring oxygen isotope ratios, we can tell the difference between an H, an L, and an LL. If you have a rock that you can't tell if, a, if it's an R chondrite or not, do oxygen isotope ratios, bam, it shows up in that spot because the moon is made up largely of earth stuff when it was run into by this impactor, big impactor, uh, the moon stuff plots on the terrestrial fractionalization line. Yeah. So I'll, I'll drop a uh, link to a paper in the, uh, in the chat. Some of the future hangouts we're gonna have are going to be involving planetary meteorites. So we're talking about the moon and Mars. Thanks everyone. I appreciate it. Have a great week. Hi everybody. Thank you for joining live and on Facebook, on YouTube guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.